everyone, welcome gamers to Halo Clans for today's interview. Today's interview is with ODST Nelson, a representative from United Brotherhood. Uh, Alright, so uh, let's get into this. What's a little bit of your uh, clan history? I know on your website it's got like generations, so uh, just kind of um, some blanks. <laughs> Alright, well I went into the EBH 5th generation. It was, let me look at the thing real quick. It started June 20th, 2014. We were military then like we are now, but we had different setups. Instead of, uh, now we're a Navy base where, you know, the main branch is Navy and we fight mostly Naval, but we do some ground. It was basically, we had an Army, we had an Air Force, we had an ODST's branch, and you had the military police. The basic branch you would go into would be the Army or the Air Force. And um, if you proved yourself worthy or you went through the requirements, you would become MPs or ODSTs. And then I'd rejoin 6th generation, but I didn't rejoin right away because I was in NAVCOM. I was in their Navy, but really inactive. We were UNSC from 6th to 7th. And, you know, basic structure, Marines, Spartans, ODSTs. But 8th generation, we decided to change into something we thought would be more creative was the military aspect again, because we felt the UBH wasn't really a... We wanted more creativity with the clan. The UBH, we felt it was getting boring, and we felt it was like every other UNSC clan out there. Generic, with their Marines, their ODSTs, their Spartan troops. So, that's why we did the Navy-based. Now, next question. Um, you have uh, government political parties and senators. Uh, care to explain to me uh, what brand or what they actually do within your clan? Oh, okay. Well, my positioning is high senator. I basically make sure all the other senators are doing their job. And what the senators are is like we have a senator of reach, a senator of MCC. Well, that's vacant, and we will fill it as time goes on. But the senator basically runs the game while the director's out. He's basically the head honcho. Like, I don't have to take care of the forces. That's not my job. I don't do the recruiting. I help the director make his political de- you know, political decisions, who to declare war on, who to ally with. For instance, I've, allied, I've had allies with um, Forgotten Soldiers, which was a very good alliance with. And I think I've allied with others, but I forgot their name. But the Senator of Reach, they basically start up the clan on those certain games. I used to be the Senator of Halo 4 and the Senator of Reach. Our Senator of Reach is currently MVG Silenced. He's been kind of inactive because of personal problems, but he should be back. And with our political parties, what that was was kind of a way of giving members a little more power, power in the clan, but the head government would still keep the keen power. We're not a republic, we're more of a, uh, mainly UBH director rules the clan, but we decided we didn't want just our opinions, we wanted others, because we felt, you know, more brains is better than one. So, it's just, it's just a way of having new ideas in the clan. Alright, um, now, you're going... I've seen that you're moving, planning to move to uh, MCC and Halo 5. What's going to be the biggest issue with uh, moving over to uh, the next-gen console? Um, my opinion on the biggest issue moving to the next-gen console is when um, we're going to have to leave a lot of we're going to have to leave people behind, obviously, and that it's always a hard thing to do. So we're probably what we're going to do is we're still going to have a Halo Reach side when we do move over, but it's going to be more of a It's not going to be the primary focus for it, obviously, not being the newest area. And it's just, it's a hard thing to do. We're going to have to make all these maps again. We're going to have to make boot camps. We're going to have to make raid maps. We're going to have to make meeting maps. We're going to have to see the new clans out there. It's going to be a new area. We're going to have to see how the Halo 5 maps look like. We're going to have to see if it's broken like it was on MCC, which it's gotten better now. And I think clans can inhabit it more than they used to be able to. But it's just going to be about change. And it's going to kind of suck leaving behind all those maps we made. Like, 
We have a series of raid bases called Beta Complexes. And then we have, you know, EBH Fort Terra, EBH... What's it called? Oh, I forgot the name. Oh yeah, UBH Western Front, which is a World War One slash D Day style map because obviously you need a base. And it has these trenches. It's just forging is gonna be different than it was on Reach because if they did what they if they did the same thing like they did with the MCC and you could make your own, you know, environment. Then we're gonna be making our own environment plus actually making the base itself. Unlike Halo Reach, where it has this Forge world and you don't use any other map. Which, in a way, it's good because it'll keep the maps fresh and not stale. Because, is once you find it kind of boring playing on the same map for, like, five years, but with just different things on it. But yeah, that's basically my answer. It's just having to leave people behind, make new maps, and see how recruitment works on there. Alright, um... Now, you're a military clan moving over to competitive. Um, once you hit Halo 5, which is pretty much going to be way the hell better than uh, Master Chief Collection, especially because joining progress is most likely definitely going to be in there. Um, which do you think uh, you'll end up playing more, military or competitive? I have actually seen some of the... They showed a sneak peek of what the Forge maps might look like. And honestly, I feel the UBH might go more military than competitive. Because, like, a lot of these people are worrying about, you know, oh no, the competitive is going to take over. And it's not really. This They got these maps, and they look nice. And they're probably going to do the same thing with MCC, because why would they take off the environment thing? All they're going to do is improve it. Like, some improvements I'd like to see is, you know, if we can make snow or not. But I feel that we'll probably be more military like we are now than we are competitive. Because we don't... Because military, in my opinion, I like it better. Because competitive gets kind of boring after a while, and it's the same thing, and you don't really forge, or... You're not very creative, but... Don't quote me, we might have a competitive team. We might have a member who wants that or something. And we'll probably just tell him he'll have to build it, or... We'll make him in charge of that. You would have to talk to... Director to have the whole plans on that, but... We might do a little competitive, but I believe it's just mostly going to be military. Yeah, a lot of people uh, are saying that competitive uh, takes more skill than military uh, and um, like, are just bashing all over it. And I'm like, it takes more yeah. skill to kill somebody with a pistol all the way across the map than it does a sniper rifle. Right. My, <laughs> right. my opinion on that is that you got to look at it at this. It takes different skills to do both. And it... I mean, if you can look at it at raid as, you know, you just wait in the game all day, and then when the person ends it or kicks you, you win. But I feel like competitive and military in the sense have the same skill sets, but they're different. Like, competitive is more, you don't have to find your enemy. He's already there, and he doesn't have an advantage over you. Y'all are basically the same. You'll have to look for callouts, map positions, you know... You gotta know where your friends are, you gotta be in teams. And somewhat like the same as military. Military, it's, here's a base, you gotta find its flaws, you gotta exploit it. You gotta surprise the enemy, you gotta kill the opponent. They might give you a spiker, they might give you a pistol. If you're lucky, they'll give you an AR and a, and a gren no, rock, uh, grenade. And it's just, a lot of these people complain, and it just... To me, it's like, you know, if you're complaining about the military side, then why don't you just focus on the competitive? Then worrying about us, because we're doing fine, and it's obvious this community's not going anywhere anytime soon. All right. Um, one last question. What thing do you want to see most in Halo 5 that either has or has not been in the other Halos? What do I want to see in Halo 5? a hard question um i would like to see more emotion on the master chief than we've seen previously and i'd like to see more answers filled a fight between agent Locke and um master chief would be good i just want plot twists basically it needs to be they said it's going to be the darkest halo right well i want to see them show us it's the darkest halo i don't want it just to be like you know 
here's another, you're just gonna kill hordes on hordes. Like, it needs to be emotional, because Halo 1 and Halo 2, I'm playing those right now. And the main characters, maybe the Arbiter a little bit, but I feel the Master Chief doesn't really show emotion. It's just, Master Chief, we want you to kill this. And in Halo 4, they did a better job at it, but I feel they can do even better. And especially with these trailers of, you know, it shows, you know those live action trailers I'm talking about with the Master Chief and Agent Locke, right? Yeah. Well, that showed pretty good emotion and it got me really hyped for the game. And I would like to see, like, I'd also like to see a smarter human AI that actually uses tactics. I understand that, you know, the humans will be overpowered by the elites, but I'd rather not them run in front of the uh, elite and just pretty much go suicide. And I'd like for not to get shot at by my own uh, friends. Like, if you play Halo Combat Evolved, I understand it's a game from 2000, but, like, the human AI hasn't really improved at all. Maybe a little bit, but that's about it. But I remember in, like, Halo Combat Evolved, having a Marine throw a grenade at me and basically kill me. Halo 2, I would have, you know, Marines shoot at me when they were trying to shoot at someone else, or they would just die instantly. I would like it to seem more like they could do better things and I don't know I don't I'm not really a big friend I don't enjoy the uh ally that doesn't die no matter how many shots he gets because that that seems a little too easy because the mission quarantine zone one of the thing like you know they have those invincible allies well all you have to do is have them kill everyone while you sit in the back and just watch I would like maybe more space battles they did a good job in Halo 4, but I would like them to expand on it, maybe try some new elements. It'd be kind of cool to have... Like, you don't have to just be the Master Chief for Agent Lock, and maybe you could do some naval fights, because those aren't really in Halo. They're somewhat with Halo Reaches and that space station, but it'd be cool to actually control a uh, frigate or something like that. Kind of like Star oh. Wars Battlefront. Yeah, that'd actually be a good idea. Because you always gotta try new things or else it's just gonna be the same game over and over like Call of Duty. Just newer graphics. And I like that they don't somewhat, they're somewhat not like that. But in a sense they are kind of repetitive. Now, Halo Reach. Now, I want that campaign to be canon unlike Halo Reach's campaign. So that'd be a nice thing too. And the graphics are nice. I like, they need to improve the graphics, which they will. So what else? It'd be cool if they had more variants of the Flood, like different character models for the Flood. Unlike that one human infected form that you fight over and over and over again. Maybe different human infected forms, different elite infected forms. Because if you look at the graphic novels like the Mona Lisa, they, they look different from each other. But in the video games, they look exactly the same. It's like... It's like a bunch of twins or triplets or whatever all got infected. They were all family members. And it's just kind of weird not having the, um... Flood... You know, it's weird having the Flood look the same when it's just them basically being controlled. And it even describes the Flood as, like, they could have the face of your, you know, of your friend or somebody you know. So it'd be pretty, it'd be pretty cool if, you, if someone got infected, like a, one of the human character models that actually showed their face and what they wore. Like, don't you just get? Isn't that kind of weird just to see the infection forms look exactly the same? But you yeah, would have the comics. Yeah, but you would have the comics and you know that Halo. What is it called? Let me look for it real quick. Um, Halo Evolutions, like those little comic animated thing i don't know what they're called but it showed different character you know flood characters like if let's say your friend gets infected he would actually look like him, he would look like his human character model but really obvious and you know changes that the flood does to you like that weird looking arm thing that they use to attack you yeah the tentacle rape arm yeah and something halo 4 missed was like, they didn't have Brutes, and they didn't have the Flood, and you always want to add things, but keep some of the old things. Like, it would be cool to have had Brutes, 
had Flood, had, you know, for, Forerunners were a good addition, and the Knights were a pain. And have Covenant, and I don't like how the uh, Covenant, you don't, you know the old Covenant, how they had basically the same armor, to, but different colors? Yeah. Except maybe a few groups. They should include, and then you had Reach that had the different armor types. And then you had four with new armor types. It would have made more sense to add all of them in Halo 5 instead of just one of them. Now, I understand it's not a united covenant anymore, but I'm pretty sure that whatever the main covenant antagonist or whatever his face is, Drew Madonna, I believe. Is that his name? Uh, well, I can't remember. Yeah. Anyways, I'm pretty sure his uh, thing's gotten bigger with the Prometheans and Elites. Now, multiplayer, I would like to see variety in that too. Maybe, uh, because I'm playing Halo MCC here, and I'll have good KDs. Like, I'll go 28 and 5 one game, and then the next game, my team can't even have five kills. And the enemy has, like, you know, 30 something. So maybe a system to kind of balance that out. I know it won't be perfect, but it'd be better than nothing. They did kind of have a system to uh, do that. It was kind of like a League of Legends, League of Legends structuring on uh, ranking. Really? Yeah. It, it completely failed. I have like lost three fourths of all my games, and I would have a good, you know, positive KD. Well, I'm talking on Halo Five. Oh, Halo Five? Oh, yeah. Well, I cannot wait to see that. They know it was on there. Yeah. Let's see, what else would I like to see? Um, Maybe different weapon variations, like, you know how you had Halo 1's assault rifle? And you know how the assault rifles were different, the pistols were different? Yeah, so that you're basically wanting to bring back weapons that have different fire rates that just suit you better. Like Yes. It, okay. That would, that would make so much more sense. Like, you don't ever want to take something away, I think you want to add. The SMG, I'm pretty sure there's different variants of it. And maybe they should, um... I, a lot of, some people want Spartan Ops, some people want Firefight, but in my opinion, it's like, maybe you should have both. That would make more sense. Because like, like I said earlier, you don't want to take away, you want to give more of. And a lot of people like Firefight, a lot of people liked Spartan Ops. Now, personally, I wasn't the biggest fan of Spartan Ops because the leveling, they just used the multiplayer maps somewhat. It was the same maps, and that got boring. Because it's like, didn't I already take this place over? Why am I here again? What are your opinions on that? Well, yes, I, I can kind of see that. I kind of like Spartan Ops to a degree, but once they re started reusing the maps over and over again, it got kind of old. But I did kind of like how they used a couple of the multiplayer maps, uh, like uh, Ragnarok in there and uh -huh. they actually had a story to go with that yeah, yeah at least they had a story with it but yeah i kind of wish they or maybe a different area near ragnarok or something they should just be a little more creative with that and the maybe we could see like they have they didn't have drones in halo 4 so they should probably add that one back too but like halo 1 and halo 2 are difficult like extraordinarily difficult but Halo 3 and Halo 4 are actually pretty easy. I've beaten them both on Legendary. Halo 4 I didn't beat it on Legendary solo, but that's just because at the time I was with the UNR and I was getting pressured to have, you know, the Mark 6 armor, so they were doing changes, so I got that done real quick. But Halo 3, the only hard mission on there that I felt was Cortana, and that's about it. So they should probably make it a lot harder than they have in the past, so it's a longer, better experience. Because it shouldn't just be like, oh, I beat Halo 3, or oh, I beat Halo 4. Because if you played Halo 1 on Legendary, right? Yeah, I've actually uh, beaten it on Lasso back before the Lasso? Master Chief. Wow. Yeah, before Master Chief, so. Let me, let me ask you, how hard was that? It took a couple days. <laughs> it, I think Halo 1, personally, is the hardest Halo, and I think they should go back to that style of difficulty. There is a... There's an obvious difficulty spike from Halo 1 to Halo 2, where Halo 2 is easier than 1. But no, I could probably talk for days about Halo, because I am a big fan of it. Maybe I'll just say one more thing that I want to see in Halo and multiplayer, and then we can continue on with whatever you want to do. 
One of the things I would like to see is like, you know how you have your colors? You should have it where you can pick your red, your blue. But maybe they should make it where you can actually customize your own color, make your own shading. Own patterns. More, yeah, more customization with your Spartan. Have it where I can have like one arm green, one arm blue. Have my legs if I wanted pink. Have my helmet, you know, purple. I can make patterns like you said earlier. And I like what they did with the gun camos, but I feel it should have even better customization to it. Because, like, a lot of people would say that, I guess a lot of people would say that's copying more of Call of Duty, but you can add different things to it. It doesn't have to be Call of Duty. And just because it, just because it changes doesn't make it Call of Duty. Like, custom loadouts, people were complaining Halo 4 was like Call of Duty, but I really didn't see it. It's just like, there's... Call of Duty had more customization to it with their guns and stuff. And Halo was just, do you want a DMR? Do you want a light rifle? Do you want a BR? Yeah, people have been saying that about like being able to sprint, being able to climb, um, yeah. weapon, personal customizations, that kind of thing. And they're saying it's like a COD clone, and I'm just like, it's natural progression of game to add those kind of things in. The more things that you could possibly do in real life is going to bring a better game experience. That is true. The more involved you make the user, the better. But, yeah, I'm hoping the game won't be as broken as Halo MCC was. But, you know, I kind of look at it like this. How many games do you get where they put, you know, four campaigns into one CD? This is, like, the first time it's ever happened. They might have done, you know, three or four but these aren't like the Assassin's Creed games. They're really big Halo games. And they take up a lot of space. Well, I mean, it's, it's not only the campaigns. Uh, they got the Yeah, because I'm like, they got five multiplayers yeah. in there because of uh, Halo CE. Yeah, like, they were trying something new. And obviously they failed at it, but they're fixing it. And plus, a lot of the first gen games didn't do really well like Assassin's Creed Unity didn't do well when it first came out I'm pretty sure I think COD Advanced Warfare didn't even do well when it first came out either I think it had problems so I would just say stay I wouldn't say be faithful to 343 but I would say just give it a chance and I don't like those people that say Halo 4 was bad you know they blindly follow Bungie and it's like you know in my opinion Halo Reach is the worst Halo it has the worst. My it has the worst campaign. I don't like the gameplay. I feel four improved on Reach. The only thing Reach has is Forge World, but even then, I think Halo Four tops it with better forging, better map variation. Because it's not like, oh, Forge, you know, Forge World, and that's the only map you can really forge on. You have Erosion, you have Impact, you have Ravine, Forge Island, which is DLC that's free. And you have different environments, and you have mods to make it where you can create your own environments, and they'd extend. People who blindly hate 343, it's just like, really? And a lot of people don't realize it, but this is their first video game of them making themselves with Halo 4. And a lot of people, for some reason, think Bungie's Halo Combat Evolved was their first game. But if you look at, if you really look at it, they were making Mac games in the 90s so it wasn't their first they had some experience yeah they had myth um Oni. And, yeah they, they had a bunch of games yeah so they were a lot more experienced than the 343 crew was but i just say give halo 5 a chance at i'm pre-ordering mine i'll probably have it paid off this month or sometime around august because i'll be gone for you know the summer thing it's just give it a chance and don't blindly be like this sucks because i'm pretty sure if bungie made halo 4 the exact same way 343 did you would have all these people man i love halo 4 it's the best one yet it's just aggravating anyways did you have something to say earlier yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, I'm not going to pre-order. I'm just going to wait till day of because of... Uh, I don't even know what my friend's doing over on the background. But, um, like, I went to go pre-order Halo 4. And uh, I bought the pre-order thing from Walmart. And I went in there the day of, like, the release. And handed over my pre-order thing. They're like, we don't even know how to use this. 
<laughs> oh, I wouldn't. If I that's because you were at Walmart, you should go to GameStop or someplace that sells video games or a lot more. Well, that like, was the thing too. I also still got my game a half hour before my friend did, who was over at GameStop, which is the same parking lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's great. I don't, I don't even know how to use this. Love that. No, they had like but, four managers coming over too, and I'm like, you know what? It's just fifteen bucks. <laughs> Here's 60 bucks. Give me my game. Uh, yeah, that's great. But, yeah, Halo... Halo's are really... A lot of COD fans, I don't think, realize this, but... The Xbox, or, you know, on the Xbox side of COD fans... The Halo's, I believe, around because... The Xbox was made for Halo in a sense because... Halo was the top thing for its seller. For the original Xbox back in 2000, 2001. And it, it had multiplayer. It was the first one to have multiplayer for the consoles. And other games followed. I'm not going to say it had the first multiplayer because I'm pretty sure some computer games beat it to that. But it was, you know, it evolved. It raised the bar. And I think that's another reason why a lot of people didn't like 4. Is because, you know, Halo 1, it, you know, it was the first one. It evolved the way the first person shooter was. Halo 2 made multiplayer big. Halo 3 made this big conclusion about the trilogy and epic ending. I mean, I don't think... I'm pretty sure, like, 90% of people love Halo 3. But after that, they don't really like it anymore. But I don't know. That's just my guessing. But, like, I think the reason Halo... A lot of people went to COD and stuff was because Halo 3 was made in 2007. They didn't make an, another Halo until 2010. So they might have waited a little too long. Maybe they should have done it in like 9. Or you know somewhere around early 10. Eight, late 9. But they had like Halo 3 ODST. Which I wouldn't really even consider a game. I would just consider that. That should have just been DLC in my honest opinion. Because it took me 4 days to beat that legendary solo. It took me so a night. A night? Well I didn't spend. I had to do clan events too. So, And it made me restart the first and second mission. Even though I had like the third and fourth one done, so that was a little aggravating. Is mm -hmm. continue? You were saying something. Uh, I have a history of uh, Halo games. The minute I get them, it only takes me a night to beat them on Legendary. Every Halo game I've ever gotten, I've beat it one night on Legendary. <laughs> Even Combat Evolved. Yeah. <laughs> really? That yeah. was a pain. I remember doing uh. The, hard, the hardest mission on Legendary for Combat Evolved isn't even the li isn't even the library, which a lot of people, I believe, would think. I think it's keys. Keys is a pain. Yeah. Because I remember thinking, man, I'll just kill all these infection forms until they stop. Well, they never stopped. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah. But anyways... Can I uh, share some opinions on the community with you about, like, you know, this big community war that was happening on Reach or whatever you like to call it with the UNSC coalition, the military, and the insurrectionists with FS? Feel free. All right. Well, it's kind of funny, too, because I actually heard by my leader that Fred got kicked from the coalition and we made peace with him. But, like, this war kind of started because... Perscom, I believe, declared war on GWR and then others joined, which kind of told me this community was at a point where if one clan declared war on another, others were going to join it. And a lot of people don't want to call it a community war, but a community war doesn't have to have only, you know, NAVCOM and Exodus in it. It has to have the majority of, you know, at least semi-known clans, which... I, I personally don't like Commander Ark's clan, but I'm not going to bash on him here. But I would say his clan is... I wouldn't say well-loved, I would say it's known. Everyone knows who Commander Ark is. And then you'd have the Golden Warriors of Reach. They were in it. You had us in it, which we have a... Uh, I wouldn't say a big media, but we have, I think, a growing media. We were in it. We were the UNSC side on... They have a... The UNSC has a military-style military part to the coalition and that's what we're a part of and you had you know the shield of shadows or what are they now spec warcom they were in it so you had these medias in there and basically in my opinion 
to be known in the community and to be considered a superpower. It's just... It's just more of a popularity con... Well, not a popularity contest, but, like... You just have to be known media-wise. Like, if you did what the UUF did, a lot of people don't like them. And that's just... And because they don't like them, they're always watching their videos, disliking their comments. And that's just, like... You know, you can dislike their comments, but you're, you know, you're making them more popular, well, popular or infamous or whatever the word you want to use. You're making them more well-known. If you truly want to kill a clan, I feel, you just have to stop giving them activity. For instance, a lot of people want to, like, look at Exodus and say, I want to destroy Exodus, so I'll declare war on them. And it's like, you don't destroy Exodus by giving them activity, you would destroy a clan by isolating it from the rest of the community. Because who wants to join a clan that no one's going to go to war with? Is that not correct? That's a pretty fair assumption. Yeah. Like, in the UBH, we didn't, we like activity. And I don't know if you were aware of this, but there was a time back when we were UNSC and we basically declared war on every military clan on Reach. I wouldn't, that's just an exaggeration, but we declared war on a lot of people. Like, we declared war on Wolfpack. GWR. We did it on Commando Arcs Clan too. But I was just like, that was a waste of time. And we did it on others, but I forgot their name. And that was just for mainly activity because people join clans, not because they want to be. They don't join clans because they want to, you know, get high in the clan, or at least the majority of what I've seen. Get high in the clan, become the general. They're not loyal to you for that. They're loyal because they want activity. And the more activity you give them, the more they'll stay. The less activity you give them, the more they'll leave. It's just... Like, how many successful clans are there that are inactive? I'm pretty sure none. And it's just kind of one of those things. But yeah, this, this whole war, I feel, was just mainly so clans wouldn't die. And they could have more activity and get more people and keep them because... People don't leave. People don't leave clan. People don't leave clans because they don't like them. They leave them because they want more activity. Like there might be a few people that do that, but activity is the main reason for it. And that's why I feel Commando Art can have a decent sized clan, even though, in my opinion, he's not a very good leader. It's just because he. People are always wanting to cl declare war on him to beat him. He has people scheduling raids with him he is being active if you really want to take his power away you would not mess with him you would ignore him but these people are helping him out unknowingly even if he loses that's still activity like what he's lost to navcom like fit like 50 to 10 or something or some outrageous number like that but people are still joining his clan he has decent numbers he's had full lobbies get nearly full lobbies and he's done it because of activity like, people want to hate on you, but it's just one of those things, like, I know at least on our YouTube channel, we'd had some former UBH people that leave, and they're gonna, you know, they want to attack us, and they wouldn't tell us what their name was, but then I go to GWR, and they said their name, and I'm just like, really? And these people that want to destroy our clan by giving us activity, that is the dumbest thing you can ever do. Yeah, last thing you heard is, you but one of the most annoying things I feel the whole thing started. is trying to kind of changing subjects here is like a lot. One problem I see with raids is there's no definitive rules to raids. It is a popularity contest to see how many people like you because let's say I am the most loved clan in the world and I'm going against the most hated clan and we end the game and we make a video stating how we won. Do you think people are going to believe me, or do you think people will believe the hated clan that no one likes? It is a popularity contest. It's it just... is. I mean, I have a term for people that do that thing, you know, you spawn trapped me, you don't have enough cover. I call them technical raid win fa- <laughs> Because that's the only way they can actually win. That's why I like bare bone rules, because it's like, it's definitive. You. That's what the EVH does, is we just do bare bone. Why, why would we even- worry about these stupid rules i remember gwr made a video when we were in that war we're not in it anymore but they were saying they won the they won the raid because of uh us being inactive and you know being afc or whatever but the okay. funny thing if you look at that video you know who they're showing moving around they're showing ubh director moving around and they're saying we're inactive 
So basically, the UBH is playing the game, but we're not. And the reason we weren't attacking was because there's like three Falcons, and they had two of them, and we, we had one. And you know how long a 30-second respawn is? So no, we couldn't attack right away. And it's, you know, it's just one of those things. The war is good. It gives commun It'll give more people into the community. Like, I believe Divisible Halo, not talking about your fight, made a video stating he doesn't believe the clan community is dead now, unlike his video, what, four or three months ago, saying the clan community is dead. And that's just because more medias have been appearing and more... If the medias are appearing and clans are talking, it'll always... It's been the same way, but it just appears like it was dead, but it was always there, and people were just not having war. War is what keeps the community alive. And that's kind of one of the reasons the Halo 4 side of the community wasn't good, was because you didn't have very much media. You had the UNR, but that... But, you know, they weren't even active during the Xbox 360 Halo 4 era, and they didn't have very many wars because you need bad guys like the UUF. You need those hated clans. I don't like Commando Arc, but I feel he is having a very important role in the community as someone to attack. And if you get rid of those people, then who are you going to attack? Your ally? You like them, though, so why would you attack them? True. But, but you kind of have to... You have to do it in moderation, because these people, you, I wouldn't say you have to be scared. Like, Exodus is okay, but how many people actually are going to want to raid them because of their 40-hour raids and their 20-hour raids? I actually doubt any of them will want to raid them for that. Like, I don't even think NAVCOM's raiding them anymore, are they? I'm not sure. I know if uh, I had a clan right now, I would be up for a 40-hour raid. <laughs> yeah, so UBA, UBA is up for a 40-hour raid, but we're kind of... It's not in our interest right now to be raiding those clans because we have other things we want to do. And we're preparing for, you know, summer because summer is a crazy time. Like I said earlier, I will not be a part of that, sadly. I'll be gone for pretty much all of it. So we'll see what goes on. The UBH will probably still be around and doing its thing. But no, you said we were having that typing chat and... You were kind of curious on when the next, next UBH video is going to be around. And I'm hoping sometime next week, but I'm not going to promise you anything. Because I want to, I'm trying to get full coverage on what happened in the war. And trying to find the non-biased opinions and who's actually in the war. Which, Electric Static, his video helped me out on who was on whose side. But I noticed there was some inconsistency, like... They said, I believe NAVCOM is on the UNSC side, which they're not. And I haven't seen the UGN on the military side attacking the UNSC side. They might be, but I haven't seen it. So I'm just going to make sure they're, you know, he's correct. And he missed some people, so. Just, it's, it's hard finding the unbiased stuff. I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm saying here. Oh, yeah. Because... Yeah, you'll have this clan, like, we beat them, and then you'll have the other side, we beat them, and that's just... Like, the debate on raid rules, and I talked to Halo Halo clan follower, and I'll say this with you, because I don't know if you're going to do it or not. But what would be a good idea is if you're going to have a clan war, go to this website, have the leaders agree on the rules, document it on the website, have both of them personally there agree on it, you know, have, like, a post or something. I have a voice recording. And if they break those rules, they cannot back out of it because they agreed to the rules. Does that make sense? Yeah. But so if the problem with that is getting uh, everybody to uh, agree on something and that just makes them want to fight more and then they just wind up skipping it. And then Yeah, well, what's it called? If force comes to worse, you can always get them to agree on barebone rules, like, you know, a 2010 community or whatever. Well, what I thought would be interesting is uh, have, uh, like, a voting sheet. Mm, be like, uh, the clan gets uh, this many votes, and this other clan gets this many votes, and uh, basically whatever gets the highest votes are going to be the raid rules whatever gets the most no's is obviously yeah. not going to be in it yeah that could that would work and all but i kind of posted this with halo clan followers when i debated him i told them you know 
If we don't agree on these rules or we never voted, why would we follow the rules we never agreed to? Right. Does that make sense? Right. And, like, that reminds me, that, that fight between you and uh, Divisible is kind of funny. Just put that out there. It's, a, it's good media, especially for both of you. Yeah, uh... I don't, I'd rather uh, not doubt... Yeah, I'd rather not delve into the topic of who's right or who's wrong here because, you know, I'd rather be an unbiased part. Yeah, I, I really don't want to get into that in an interview, but... Uh, yeah, yeah uh, it's funny. I, it's good media, too, and it... And what's it called? It's always good to have competition. But what else is there to really talk about? The UVH plans on getting into some more wars in the summertime because, you know, that's how we are. We are a... We're basically a war-hungry clan. That's honestly how I view the UBH. But there's nothing wrong with that. We have some plans to go to MCC and to be on Reach. But I have to get Director's Lazy Butt to come help me make a boot camp because... You know, I want to see all the environments and stuff we can use. What else? It's just... The community at this point... Since the war is over, which is kind of sad, I was kind of hoping the UNSC forces and the military side will be fighting. But thankfully, we have a third party in the community war, which is the Insurrectionists. I believe that's what they call themselves, with the Mandalorians, Forgotten Soldiers, and... Um, what is their name? I forgot the other one. But um, can I make a request on who you should interview next? Sure. Um, I would request two people. I would say UN Director, or his YouTube is CHS Infamous. And he, he's he been in the community longer than I have. I've been in it for like two years almost. It'll be two years in summer. And I would also interview FS Malevolent of the Forgotten, Sol Forgotten Soldiers. I want to say Forgotten Spartans, but I know that's wrong, so I say Soldiers. His name's FS Malevolent. He probably has a Skype. You'd have to ask him for it. But those would be some interesting people to commentate with. I think this interview is about done, so... There's nothing yeah. really much to talk about. Um, well, uh, that's it for my questions. You want to do a recruitment message or ask me a question or something? Uh, ask you a question? Um, yeah, I do have a question. You know your old YouTube account? Halo Clans, I believe? Yeah. Um, what exactly happened with that? Because you had, like, what, a thousand subscribers on that? Uh, 1,400. Well, that has to... S I think you should have made a video linking them to your new YouTube channel. That would have I been have. a smart idea. Have? Yeah. Well, what um, happened? Okay, so, basically, what happened when I bought the channel on, uh, I think it was, like, May 16th, 2013, um from the other guy that owned it he was uh sponsored through broadband tv gaming and uh well i went to uh unlink the channel so i could get my own sponsor because they were paying him and all this time has been passed since then and i keep sending un unlink request messages to him and i've even emailed them and everything else and they would not unlink and they never responded to me so uh, I'm just like, well, you know, I've got to do what I got to do. So I'll just start up my own YouTube thing, try to link everybody over, and then proceed from there. And so that's basically why I had to restart because these people wouldn't let me unlink, and they they were paying the other guy the whole time. <laughs> huh? That's great. And recruitment messages, I would say just look at our YouTube, like all our videos, or dislike it, I don't really care. No, actually no, dislike it. Dislike all our videos, please, I'd, write, I'd, re I'd prefer to have a red lightsaber in all my YouTube videos. <laughs> and, let's see, check out our websites, we have four you can look at out of the five, we have an archives website, which is what I do. It is the original UBH website. You got the UBH Home, UBH Reach. And there's another one, but I forgot 
Oh yeah, the UPA website. Yeah, the political party that the basically the we gave the government of the clan a name. And if you'll see if you'll see UEH members with maroon color, that's because they're basically government troops. Which is basically all you'll see because they're the most powerful. But yeah, just if you want to join, talk to ODST Nelson or UBH Director to join. If you want Alliance, go to the UPA website and I'll probably... Or UBH Home if you really want to, but try the UPA one. And if you want War, then make a YouTube video about it because that'd be interesting to watch. All right, well, that's about it. See ya. All right, this has been Halo Clans and ODSP Nelson signing out.